Our title today are electrolytes. So one of the ways that we can describe aqueous solutions is whether or not they're able to conduct electricity. Aqueous solutions are categorized based on their ability to conduct electricity. If there are ions in solution, then we know that the solution will conduct electricity. Those ions function as electrolytes. So, electrolytic properties. And we saw this today in class. So first of all, uh, we say that a solution is a strong electrolyte if that solution is able to conduct electricity, electricity efficiently. The bulb shines brightly and that means that the compound is going to dissociate or ionize completely. So, strong electrolytes, the bulb shines brightly. So, one of our examples, we had strong acids, strong bases, as well as salts. So, as long as the salt will dissolve, the salt's going to be a strong electrolyte. So, for instance, sodium chloride, NaCl. Okay, if we take solid sodium chloride and we put that into water, the sodium chloride is going to dissolve and it is also going to completely dissociate. So it will be, uh, will give us sodium ions in solution. And now notice we say that it's aqueous because it is dissolved in water. It is an aqueous solution plus chloride All right, so strong electrolytes ionize completely. There is no reverse reaction here whatsoever. They dissolve, they dissociate, and they um, conduct efficiently. Electrolytes, on the other hand, conduct weakly, the bulb shines dimly, and that lets us know that the compound is dissociating or ionizing to a very small extent. So our example of that, we're going to use here, is going to be acetic acid. Which is a weak acid. It's characterized as a weak acid, and that's because it's a weak electrolyte. Not because it isn't dangerous, but because it's a weak electrolyte, we call it a weak acid. So we've got H C2 H3 O2. And an aqueous solution of this, we're gonna have very little of it dissociating. Most of it is going to stay associated as this compound. So it's going to give us a little bit of hydrogen ion in solution. And it's going to give us a little bit of acetate in solution. But mole for mole, like we talked about today in class, uh, not a large amount of hydrogen ion or acetate ion compared to something like hydrochloric acid, which is a strong electrolyte which completely dissociates. Acetic acid, this weak acid, slightly dissociates. Most of it is staying together as this, but there's a little bit of ion in solution. It dissociates slightly. And it's enough 
to conduct electricity very weakly through that solution. And so we see that in that the bulb shines dimly. All right. Last but not least, we have the non-electrolytes. So non-electrolytes dissolve in water, but they do not produce ions in solution. We watched an animation about this. So yeah, they dissolve, but nothing is ionizing. No ions are distributed from this compound. So they're covalent compounds. Non-electrolytes are covalent compounds, and they do not conduct electricity. They do not have the ability to dissociate in solution. So, an example of this kind of thing in terms of an equation would be sucrose, C12H22O11. Okay, so if we take solid and we put this in water, yes, it's going to dissolve. Yes, it's going to dissolve. But it's not going to dissociate into ions. It will simply be... 12 H22 O11 aqueous. So remember what we said today. A CHO is a no. A CHO is a no unless, of course, I'll go back in a moment, that CHO is a weak acid, a weak organic acid, and then the CHO is a the CHO is a Otherwise, the chosen are no 